for joining us today. My name is Kate. Um, I am the contact marketing manager. We're really excited today to have Lorraine Ball from Roundpeg joining us um, to present this webinar. Uh, the webinar will be approximately uh, 40 minutes, 45 minutes in content, and then we'll leave time at the end for Q&A. But you can feel free to type your questions in the answer box as we go along. Um, if something comes up, and we'll make sure to get back to that for you. Uh, and with that, I will hand it over to Lorraine, and we'll go from there. Thanks so much, Kate. Good morning or good afternoon, depending on where in the country you are. Today, we're going to be talking about for visitors to projects. If you were in the webinar that Phil did last week, um, he talked about using Google to get on page one, and that's awesome, but now you've got people coming to your website, what do you do with them? And that's really what we're going to focus on today, using lead maps and land pages to pull your sales up. My name is Lorraine Ball, and I own a digital agency in Indianapolis called Roundpeg, and this is how you can get a hold of me. Um, I like to say that I am a recovering uh, and uh, today I enjoy, I really enjoy um, working with businesses and helping them embrace new tools as they come at us. Today's presentation is actually part of a five part series on marketing. So you're not going to feel like you've missed out on anything, but if at the end of the program you're interested in getting a link to the entire program, we can send that to you. With that, let's get started. Let's look at lead magnets and landing pages and really look at kind of what's the big deal? Why are these things important? And the answer is, is really very simple. We spend a tremendous amount of resources driving people to our website. We buy ads on Google, we share content on social media, and this is really all that either pays off or doesn't. And it's with the lead magnet, what you use to capture somebody's attention, and the landing page where you take that interest and convert it into a prospect. It is a generation or address. And why? Because then you have an opportunity to continue the conversation. You have an opportunity to share more of your expertise. You have an opportunity to present very targeted and if they come to my web and download a white paper on email marketing, I can send them additional information on email marketing. When we work with some of our food clients, and we put together downloads, and I'll show you an example. Someone downloads a collection of recipes, send them, uh, so they will buy the product in the store, and then come back and download more recipes. As you're doing this exchange, you, give it, you, you have an opportunity to both demonstrate your expertise, to prove that you know something that is worth their email address in exchange for. If you're in a knowledge business, if you're an accountant, a lawyer, a marketing person, you're a consultant, you're a tech, you're a tech company, and it gives you that opportunity to begin that deeper relationship. It is about attracting the right prospects. And as you are thinking about your lead magnet, you'll notice the words it bolded three times. It is identifying and solving a specific problem with a specific solution for a specific segment of your market. This will not work if you are still trying to target anybody and everybody with your marketing. This work will identify out of the hundreds and thousands and millions of people out there. There is a community that has a very specific problem, and you can solve it with 
a case study, frequently asked questions, a how-to guide, it's written specifically now. So, what do you use for your, your lead magnet? What do you trade? It's an exhaustive list, and these are only a few examples. Industry data, if you are in an industry where things change, there's a lot of survey where people are curious about how other people are solving the same problems, how-to guides, case studies, collections of blog posts. This is one of my favorite. We write blog posts regularly for ourselves and for our clients, and every so often we look at all of the blog posts that have been written, pull together five or ten on a related topic, bundle it as a collection, and offer that as a download. And so you're thinking, now wait a minute, all of those blog posts are on your website. Why would someone create an email or can just find them and find them? And the answer is convenience. You're putting all the information in one place with a neat little bow. If you're in an industry where resource kits, um, checklists, and worksheets that you can gather, we'll turn their email address for that all day long. What else? It can be access to discounts and special offers, product previews, invitations to special events, scorecards and checklists. I'm going to stop a moment on scorecards. Everybody wants to know. How they compare your people. Putting a scorecard on your website, rank yourself against. People will respond. They will fill that out. They will give you their email in order to get the answer. Podcasts, webinars like this, videos, slide decks, anything that you have that you would offer to a client or a prospective client. Think about bundling it in a way that is easy to download from your website. And the cool thing is they don't have to be complicated. There's a couple of different downloads that I went looking for as I was preparing this particular workshop. And I'm going to go back a moment. This one, this is really simple. It's a simple activity log. What I like about it. It looks like they laid it out in either published or software. They the hyperlinks. So if you download this and you forget where you got it, it's buried in the footer, in the header. There's links to more information. But the truth is, they created this in Word. Saved it PDF. This does not have to be very difficult to create. Take a look at a lot of the tools that you're already using. Sure, you can spend the money and have someone lay it out for you professionally. These do look nice, but honestly, it's as valuable as this to the person who needs that worksheet. Some rules on creating. Uh, your lead magnet, they can be very simple to create. It's nice if you've got a good cover. You want to save it as a PDF, even if it's an editable PDF. What you don't want is somebody else downloading your content and putting their, um, easily putting their uh, branding information on it and passing it off as theirs. Yes, it does happen. I don't give away the very best content. But I do give away good information that serves as a teaser that earns me the right to continue the conversation. Because here's the thing. If what you offer isn't any good, I'm not going to be very responsive to your email. Uh, this is an example of a cookbook that we do for a client. We download, um, we have a network of recipe developers. We put a bunch of recipes in a Word document, each one on its own page. We save it as a PDF. We put a pretty on it, and we offer it. We offer it on Facebook. We offer it on the website. And people will trade us their email address to get this guide. 
What makes a great lead magnet? Several things. Number one, they need to be again this too broad, too general. It's not going to really solve anybody's problem. And if it doesn't specifically solve my problem, I'm going to go looking somewhere else for that resource that really for me. One big thing. There's there don't have to be 50 tools in the package. If the one tool that I really want is there, I'm going to download. This immediate gratification is important. So as you are constructing that, you want to make sure that people can get the tool quickly. If they fill in their email address and you're going to email them a link, make sure that happens right away. There is nothing worse than filling in a form and expecting that the PDF is either going to load or need to get and I have to wait 30 or 45 minutes. The reason I download it is I want it now. Rapid consumption or use. You want your lead magnet to be something that I can read very quickly, start right away. A three-page book may sound attractive, but for most people, that's not going to be satisfactory. They gave you their email, they want the headlines, the highlights, and then links to get more information, that's cool. But give me something I can read, use, apply right away. I perceive value. Even if it's just a Word document that you put together and saved as a PDF, if it's a worksheet that I can use, it will have high perceived value. And ideally, it shifts the relationship. And earns you the right to keep sending me information. The best lead magnets are short, simple to create and consume, and they leave prospects wanting more. I don't care if you call this the ultimate guide to lines. It's type that. At the end of the day, I want you to walk away going, man, that was great, but I wish there was more. So when they get my next email, they get a phone call from me, they get that next communication, they're actually happy to receive it. Okay. So you've created this awesome lead magnet, and now you need to build a submission form that you're going to put on your website to encourage people to give you their contact information in exchange for your lead magnet. You ask for the submission. This is an example of two different lead forms. And I always tell people only ask for what you absolutely need. Which of these two forms are you more likely to fill out? The one that says, or the one that asks for your name, your phone, the best time to call, the city, the state your age, the name of your firstborn, et cetera, et cetera. We've all seen these. This you'll fill out in a minute. This longer one, you're really whether or not you even want to do this. What I always suggest is go for the short and then send me additional information. So if you download a, a workbook, all I ask for is your email address to send it to you. But then I may invite you to participate in the to give me your name and your phone number. And then if you do that and you want the next round of tools, you have to give me a little bit more and a little bit more. So I earn the right to ask for more information rather than putting up this barrier up front that you tell me your entire life story. Um, this was from a study from Formstack. They're one of the leading providers of form building tools. And at around 11 fields, you still have 120% more conversion than you do if you ask 15. If you drop down to four fields, you're at 160% more conversions. So if your objective is starting the conversation, 
This is pretty clear that the less you ask for, the more you get. Um, there are a lot of tricks that you can do in the design that will actually encourage people to fill the form out. Number one, left align your data fields. Single column, especially on your buttons, clear questions. Don't make me guess what kind of information you're looking for. And this is really critical, smart error handling. If you are doing a longer form and the fields are required, and I say, you tell me which field is wrong. There is nothing I hate worse than filling out a long form and then having to go line by line by line to figure out what I did wrong. Smart error handling will save you um, from a high abandonment rate. And thinking about the call to action at the bottom of the button, your action statement should be one to three words, not more than that. Um, and there are a couple of different categories of action statements that work. The first are what I call the command, do this. The second is more benefit oriented. Get the kit, grab the resource. It kind of tells me what I'm going to get after I'm done filling in the information. The third one is the avoid the I tend to, to prefer the benefit driven statements. I tend to, and we've tested a lot of these, um, we seem to get really good results. I would recommend creating two or three different forms and testing them against each other. Regardless of your audience, however, your call to action is in all caps. It is click, not click. It is get the kit, not get the kit. Yes, I know we've all been ta taught that all caps is kind of loud. But when it comes to your call to action, you need to shout a little bit. As you're designing your button, a couple things to keep in mind. The first is contrasting colors. You want to pick a color that goes with your brand, but stands out. Everything on a round peg website is going to be blue, teal, and white. We are blue and teal. But a lot of our buttons we will often do in orange to pull your eye, to attract your attention. Typically, a third the width of the form. And it's nice to have subtle movement. You've seen them. Sometimes you roll over a button and it changes color or it moves a little bit. If you can do this, again, it's for someone. It's really important if you really want to get their attention, don't be afraid to go big. Look at these two buttons. Which one are you going to be more likely to click? So, review ask for less info. Consider adding a privacy policy if you're asking for a lot of information. We promise we're not going to use your information. We're not going to sell it to third party vendors, blah, blah, blah. It can be in very, very little print, but some people still get put off. Uh, contact info without that additional info at the bottom. Compelling CTA. Remember that your color placement and size matter and CAPTCHA. I hate CAPTCHA. I get it. You don't want to spend it. I get it. The truth is, CAPTCHA forms really annoy the crap out of people. Half the time, they can't read what they're supposed to type, and so they then don't type it correctly, and they have to go again. It turns to you CAPTCHA, use smart CAPTCHA, maybe an addition, equation, something that's easy for people to do where they don't have to read those blurry pictures. 
but really I would create your form and let it go natural without the captcha and then look at how many bad email addresses how much spam are you getting if it's an unmanageable amount totally put the captcha in if not let it go tools out there. I mentioned Formstack earlier. I love these guys. They happen to be a local Indiana company. I've worked with them for a long time. They have a really robust form building tool. If you are doing any kind of form construction that requires HIPAA uh, complaints, uh, languages for medical offices, doctor's offices, I totally would look at Formstack. Um, it is uh, a monthly subscription fee to use it. They also do a good job of storing data if you're doing uh, forms where people are submitting uh, specifications, Formstack's a good choice. Gravity Forms is nice. Um, it builds into your Word, uh, your website. We use it on, on WordPress websites. Um, you can even do payment gateways with both Formstack or Gravity saves the documents to their server, Gravity Forms will save it to your website. So you want to be sure if you're taking submissions that you've got enough capacity on your website to host that. Bloom is a lovely integration for WordPress. Uh, um, Wufu has a free option. I've not played with form tools, but I, I was doing some searching in their tool. Locally. Uh, you, if you're using Constant Contact or MailChimp um, or Robly, you can actually use the email opt-in form to get the data. And um, something else, uh, if you're trying to capture contacts and push them to an email tool, um, that integration allows you to capture people's information in one place and push it to multiple other applications. Okay, so we've got our lead magnet, we've got our form, now we need to build that landing page to pre off. And here's good reasons for visitors to make that exchange. Just saying, we've got cool stuff, give me your email address, is not going to cut it. This is a pretty good mock-up of a typical page. Very nice headline at the top, a photo or a video, the form, a little bit of benefit. Maybe people aren't convinced, so they go down the page, and maybe there's a more a stronger reinforcing statement. So and the call to action. So the way I kind of think about it is, here's my cool stuff, don't you want to trade? Here's why you want it, not convinced yet, ready to trade. When you're building your landing page, if you're part of um, your overall website, you want to think about a simple header, um, and you may actually want to leave off the menu. You want to limit navigation. You want to make it hard for people to go somewhere else. They came to this page and there is one thing on the app to fill out your exact form. The page should have a single clear purpose and here it says the CTA needs to be above the fold. It needs to be in the top third of the page and if this is a mobile, uh, when viewed on mobile, it needs to be you have supplemental information and then close again with a second CTA. As you're designing your, land, your landing page, think about color and contrast. Think about white space. Give it a little room around the form. Space is not always white. White space is a design term meaning 
Just air, room around the form. Let it breathe and stand on its own. Um, encapsulation works really well. There's a set up because it's a color. There's nice contrasting use of color. The logo is red. Almost everything else is black and blue. But your call to action and then the download here are both in red. And the other thing that I really love about is this arrow. You read this, it's the first thing you see, and then it pulls your eye right to that form. This is actually an awesome layout. I'm not really fond of the dark gray context, but just the structure of this page is one of the best I've seen. These two are both hideous landing pages. I mean, hideous. I want to make three updates and my 20 week e course. And on the right, grow enough food to feed a family of four in just four, fair squ four square feet. Get instant access. Which do you think is more effective? I'm going to give you a clue. It's this one. Get instant access. This is what you want. No messing around. Click here. This one, give me your email address, and I'm going to give you it for eight weeks. I have 20 weeks to get all this stuff. Who has time for that? This author would have been way better to break these up into five smaller courses. Five week course, Marketing 101. Did you like the first class? That immediate payoff. Nobody wants to wait 20 weeks to get all your stuff. Compelling landing pages, couple of different examples. Um, I like this with the picture underneath it. I think the picture pulls your very and here's how it works and more info. Here, I think they've done a really good job with their benefit statement. Generate even more leads from your blog. The only thing is I think that I would prefer to have this higher page and this picture is taking up valuable real estate. Involve your visitors. This particular landing page I thought was brilliant. Now, of course, the company is Conversion Lab. This is what they do. But okay, yeah, I want help with my landing page. And here's what they do. The form pops up. It doesn't, I don't even feel like I've left the page, but suddenly I've got that contact. I click and now I fill it out. This actually is probably a second page because he gets bigger and moved over a little bit. But the point with this was I wasn't hit with this form until I actually indicated I was interested. Okay, so if you build it, they'll come, right? Well, maybe not. So let's take a look at some ways that you can promote your landing page. You certainly can run Google Ads. You can also traffic the landing page from other pages on your website, from social media, from online ads, and offline promotions. This is probably one of the most powerful ways to pull people through a website. They're a casual visitor. They're reading a blog post or looking at information. And this shows up in the middle of a page. Free tool to burst, boost my conversion rates. Try it now. And I click on it, and it takes me to land. When you shop online, again, in this instance, the landing page is 
their online store and you click on it and it takes you right to where you can buy. Social share graphics. That you can use on Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter with a link to your um, landing page. Now, both of these graphics are fine for social shares. They work great in Facebook. They work in LinkedIn. One thing that I will caution you about. On LinkedIn, if I decide I want to turn these into an ad, I can. I can't on Facebook because Facebook has that rule that no more than 20% of can get I want to actually ever Facebook to promote this content, content plan. The picture will get bigger and the text will get smaller. Okay. So we kind of flew through all of that, but then the question now is, what's next? Where are you from here? What's the thing? You've built this list. You've got these people. You know what they're interested in. You have to be prepared to follow up, to send them an email newsletter or an auto response campaign. And occasionally you might even be prepared to pick telephone to connect and answer additional questions. And with that, I'm going to make two offers. The first is if you enjoyed today's program, can I mail you the entire boot camp? Just go to roundpeg.biz slash bootcamp and you'll be able to see the other classes in the series. And in those classes, we talk about building autoresponders and building great looking email campaigns and focusing and targeting messages, making those great connections. And for those of you who are here today, I'll make special offer number two. If you already have landing pages and you'd like some feedback on your page, go ahead and email me a link to your landing page with the subject line, MSR, audit my page. And with that, Kate, I'm gonna open it up for questions. All right, that sounds great. Thank you so much, Lorraine. Um, so this time, questions about wonderful information that we just went through. Uh, you can type them right into your question box. Um, we do have a question that came through about getting the slides afterward, just making sure that that was going to be possible. And as an update for that, so within 24 hours, we will be sending a video of this webinar along with a PDF version of these slides. Oh, and um, I forgot, um, there is a companion workbook that goes along with this particular presentation. And that will be, uh, um, I'll send that to you and then we can distribute that. Oh, that sounds perfect. So that will all get included um, in the follow-up email that we send out. So we do have a question, uh, Lorraine, about someone asking why, um, when you had recommended that people save things as a PDF versus a JSON. JPEGs get fuzzy. PDF, I mean, PDFs uh, really are designed to, um, unless it unless it's like an infographic, uh, a lot of times the the text will get fuzzier in JPEGs, and they just present much better for in PDFs. That makes sense, and I think also probably when you're talking people downloading those those eBooks and things like that, the nice thing about it is that with PDFs they can be probably looked at on mobile devices more easily, whether that's through iBooks or a Kindle app or something like that as well. Absolutely. I, I just um, really think the uh, format for uh, that kind of data exchange. That makes sense. Um, let's see. So someone else wanted to hear a bit about your thoughts on sending slide shares. My thoughts on sending slide shares? Um, I love to put content on SlideShare and um, 
uh, with a good description and keywords and, and links back to my primary website. Um, I probably, I, I my PowerPoints to a PDF because it's easier to consume and view. Um, you don't get the distortion. If you actually send the, like the PowerPoint deck, um, if you don't have the font that I used, it's not going to look the same way. So, um, but if it's very focused and very targeted, and if that's what someone is looking for, I think it's a great, I think it's a great resource to send. The other thing though, with slideshows is that, um, like this PowerPoint presentation is designed to just look talk. You don't miss, but sometimes a PowerPoint presentation doesn't really make any sense unless you hear the audio that goes with it. Got it. Thank you. Um, we did ask someone, is there a way that you could scroll back to your um, slide? Your Absolutely. Don't mind me. I'm still scrolling because I forgot oh, that's to, fine. <laughs> I forgot to put it at the very end. There we go. There, oh, that's perfect. Um, and it's it's uh, my email is just Lorraine at roundpeg.biz. All right, Lorraine at roundpeg.biz. I'm making sure to expect um, in, in any of the follow up communication. Um, another question, I guess, uh, that I had um, when you were talking about creating kind of continuously asking, earning the right, I guess, to ask people for more information. Uh, you mentioned. You know, something eventually there's a webinar. Do you have other tips on more things that can be offered, more things that people can present to be able to start to generate some more information? Like, do you find there are certain offers that work better than others? Um, I, I think um, a little bit on the market and, and your product. So, for example, um, you know, a pre a uh, preview of how a product works maybe you get an email but if you want a hands-on demo now you need to give me more contact information um, web in the series all you need is the email the next two or three in the series you need more information um the uh again you know um uh maybe it's Tools. Really, it's kind of just building. Um, what's your throwaway? What's the you know what 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 has uh, what has a little bit more value? Then you earn the right to ask for a little bit more. That makes the other sense. the other thing is that um, don't ask for the you don't really need. We for a long time we were doing this where you would download something from our website, you'd give us your email address, and then every time you got a newsletter from us, we'd send you to a landing page and you had to fill in your contact information again. And people actually kind of got annoyed. They were like, you're already annoyed. What, what we started doing for that, where I really didn't need to know more than just your email address, after you downloaded the first time, Every week we send a free resource that's got a video and a landing page. And tell me who you are because my email tracks it. I know who opened the email. I know who clicked. I can pull that whole group of people into a list because these are my hotter prospects. And now I only offer them that next level of product. That's of more information exchange required. But I haven't annoyed them every week asking for their email, asking for their email. I don't need it. I already have it. Got it. That makes sense. Wonderful. Um, so I have another question with regard to landing pages. So ask how you think for service business where visitors arrive wanting to schedule a service. He said, you know, you, you said that less is more, but wanted to hear your thoughts when someone's arriving on a landing page looking to schedule a service as opposed to necessarily purchasing or downloading a product? Um, in that instance, um, I think it's a little bit of a rule break because people are filling out um, 
So for example, um, for a heating and air conditioning company, electrician, these are companies that you might do that. I might have a landing page on five things to get home for summer. That landing page, I'll only offer, ask for your email. But if the purpose of the landing page is actually to facilitate the transaction, in that instance, I need your name, your phone number, your address, and when you want And more information, in that instance, I, uh, I get from you, the faster I can respond and get you set up. In that instance, I don't think um, people will object. But again, um, I had somebody who was, uh, it was a carpet company, you know, to come out. So name, address is critical because I got to know what side of town you're on, phone number. Um, but then there were too many other questions. Are you interested in wood or vinyl or carpet or tile? And 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 so suddenly you have to qualify. He pulls out and he's scheduling more appointments. And then what he does is he gets the appointment, he gets it scheduled, and then he sends a follow-up email that says, hey, We've got all these different options. Why don't you take a look? And if there's some that you like, we'll be more prepared when we come. So everything you need in order to set the appointment and then anything else do in a follow-up. Got it. So once the appointment is set, you can generate some more of that information. Mm-hmm. And that, Very that was, good. That, that's where that idea of autoresponders and follow-up yeah, so it sounds like less is more, but obviously you want to have the appropriate amount of information. So it, sometimes that doesn't mean that there only needs to be one thing. If you need four, you know, four bits of information in order to complete the product or service, then you feel like that's okay. Yes, absolutely. Most of the other landing pages we're talking about are really kind of that point of entry, open the door, let me learn more about you. Mm -hmm. to to read my testimonials or to read a case study or to um, uh, ways to use my product, it's okay to just give me your email. But if you want me to schedule an hour of my time and you're going to schedule an hour of yours, let's get acquainted. Let's know a little bit more about each other. About each other, right. That makes sense. Uh, we have a question. One is um, only sells webcasts. So would you have recommendations on what else she can offer? Is there some type of, do you recommend, I guess, people creating some type of lower level lead magnet um, so they have something to work up to for their main product or service? Absolutely. So um, a webcast, um, I have to commit, like, like you guys today committed an hour of your time that you were going to spend with me. And you did it both um, based on the recommendation of, of uh, the, you know, the team at Main State. But if I come to your site and I don't know any of these people and I don't really know how good the content is, give me um, a transcript, an outline, a couple of slides. It's kind of like the way Amazon, um, whenever you go to the book, you can read pages give me a little teaser that i can get for just my email address before i commit to buying a webcast or uh giving you an hour of my time does that kind of help yeah absolutely so some type of like intro to whatever the actual song you can listen to the 30 second preview or something like that absolutely and and um you know after somebody does that then you can come back and, you know, offer them other, you know, uh, if somebody doesn't then go continue, then you if you didn't want to do a topic. Got it. No, that's great. Um, and then another question that came in about your recommendation on how many newsletters should businesses send to the same list? And someone asked, is one every Tuesday too often? Um, That depends on uh, how good your content is 
I, 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 and I, I mean, and um, what I have seen, um, we used, when we first started doing email newsletters, we did them once a month. And then we were doing for 10 days. And then we switched to once a week. And our open rate and click-through rate actually has gone up. And today, um, we actually send two emails every week. Now, we've given people an opportunity. We keep reminding them that they can pay. Do you want to stay one Wednesday? They're very different. Um, do you only want the once a month um, webinar reminder? Do you want the quarterly seminar reminder? So people can kind of pick and choose. Um, what I always recommend is um, watch your open through. If your rate is falling, then back off. You're probably sending too much content. If your click through rate starts falling, then that's a clear signal that you're disappointing people once they open your email. And so you need to work on your content and your conversion points in your email. Um, on the other hand, if somebody has downloaded something, that's a very specialized thing. Um, for example, if somebody uh, downloads our how to build a, how to write a business plan in 12 weeks, they're going to get an email. If they download the email boot camp, that is a five day program. They're going to get one email every day for five days. One of the things that if there is an auto response campaign tied with an offer, be sure to let people know how after you create the campaign, remind people, hey, you're getting this email because you downloaded our landing page guide. You're going to get five emails. You can unsubscribe at any time. Um, and then after that, this is what's going to happen. Um, do you have a recommendation? We had another question come in on the best time for someone to email their list. Um, there's uh, there are some general rules, and then there are industries that break the rules. I tell people that when you're first starting, you want to send a business to business communication Tuesday, Wednesday, or Thursday. And you want to send it at 10 or at 2. Now, that's kind of the general. Retail and grocery stores, I almost always recommend Thursday morning. Why? That goes back historically to way, way back when stores closed at 6 o'clock every night except Thursday. Thursday came weekend day and that continued with grocery stores putting their coupons in the Thursday newspaper it's bigger and fatter and people kind of have in their head I'm going to go grocery shopping for the week so grocery Thursday morning is really good is direct at moms that two o'clock in the afternoon time slot is good or actually 7 o'clock at night often does really well. 7 to 8 o'clock at night. Mom's sitting down after the house gets quiet, after the bed, she'll open up her, her laptop and she'll read some email. Um, we actually send our newsletter because we target an audience of business owners. So we actually send our newsletter um, the trick is if you just want someone to read something that's fine if you want them to click and fill out a form or do something else that's too early because they because laptops home as much anymore if you need someone to be at their desk do the 10 or 2 Got and it. Then, Thank you. That's great advice. Oh, I'm sorry. I cut you off. <laughs> well, I was going to say one other thing is divide your list into thirds, send exactly the same, and for a couple of weeks, rotating the time. 
So this week I got it at 10, next week I got it at two, the following week I got it the next day and compare your open and click through rates. That makes sense. So doing that split testing to really go see. Okay, so we have a couple more questions. Um, one is coming in from Tom. He wants to know if you have a visual tracking tool that you recommend for testing page engagement. In the past, he's used Crazy Egg, but would love to know if you have another tool that you recommend. Um, also, with AppSumo, I do like Crazy Egg. Um, we, uh, because I, because I tend to keep my um, landing page is pretty simple. There's usually, um, like on my favorite landing page, there's, there's not going to be that many places to go on the page. So there's not, there, I don't need an in-depth. But yeah, um, Crazy Egg and AppSumo is nice to give you that kind of, not AppSumo, um, Sumo Me, I apologize. Uh, AppSumo is where you buy discounted software. But Sumo Me, Got it. That's great. Thank you. And let's see. One of the uh, last questions we have is whether or not your company offers help with website conversion. Um, we are exclusively a website. In WordPress, we can help you build different websites, construct messages, etc. Kate, do you guys do any of that as well? Um, we do, Main Street, we do help with some website conversion. We also recommend WordPress as well. Um, we need to move over, um, but we're kind of in the same boat in terms of working specifically on WordPress. Cool. Uh, you know, and um, I recognize there are other tools. I have found for businesses of all sizes, I really like the page. Uh, on the fly, get a landing page up, drive some traffic to it, and decide very quickly, did that work or didn't, and change my mind. Yeah, absolutely. I think that that's extremely valuable. All right. Well, I think that pretty much Okay, Lorraine, thank you so much for all of this valuable info. And um, we, again, will be sending out a, a and follow-up email with a link to the video replay so that you can watch this webinar again, as well as a PDF to look through the slides. And we thank you all so much for us. And everybody has a great day. Awesome. Thank you.